Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will help demonstrate how to check your wave tester optical power meter for proper operation using a laser OWL single mode light source. Patch cables and test equipment should always be checked prior to testing to ensure accurate and reliable test results. Usually a good time to do this is at the beginning of every testing day. In this procedure, we will be using the Wave Tester Optical Power Meter and the Laser Owl Single Mode Light Source. You'll see that there are three patch cables and one mating sleeve shown here, uh, which will be used during this procedure. We have two patch cables here. Uh, these patch cables will connect the Laser Owl into the link under test, and the reason there are two here is because we have two wavelengths. Also, this is a duplex cable. It's, it's easier to handle a duplex cable than it is to handle two simplex cables. This third cable here is for the wave tester, for connecting it into the link under test when you're performing the measurement. And then this mating sleeve here is simply used for this procedure only just to check these uh, patch cables so that they're working together. One thing to make sure of is that the patch cables have the right connector type on them. So you have to look at the test equipment uh, connectors, which in this case we have SC. Uh, this is a universal port, which is also compatible with SC. The other end of the patch cable has to, has to match uh, the, the connector type in the patch panels that you will be plugging into. So uh, in this case, we're going to assume that the patch panels have SC in them. Now, first thing we need to do is turn on the testers. Okay. All right, you'll see that the uh, the... 1310 nanometer indicator LED is lit by default. And then here on the, on the wave tester, you'll see that the word low appears. Okay. What low means is that there's no amount of light coming in to be measured. That's because the detector is covered up with this dust cap. If we remove the dust cap, you'll see that what happens here. We get a, we get a reading. Okay. This reading is simply uh, reading uh, ambient room light. So in this case, uh, some fluorescent lights in the room. That's what it's, it's measuring. Now, what we need to do first is connect the uh, reference cables to the two connectors on top of the laser owl. All right, then what we have to do is connect the other side of the reference cable into the detector port. All right, notice it says low again. Uh, we probably plugged in the wrong side of the, uh, the reference cable. So we just disconnect that, put the dust cap back on, which is always a good idea. And then we plug in the other reference cable. OK, now the one thing we want to make sure of is that we are set to both the same wavelengths. In this case, we're at 1550. We need to change this back to 1310 nanometers. So we just press the wavelength button until we see 1310 nanometers. The other thing we need to make sure of is that we're reading in dBm for, for this part of the procedure. To do this, we simply press the units button until we see dBm. Okay, see dBm right here. Okay, now, in order to make sure that the, the equipment's working and the patch cables are fine, what we're looking for is a target value of approximately minus 10 dBm. Okay, it can be a little higher, a little lower, it's a little lower in this case. Um, now, the, the main thing is you want to make sure that you're not exceeding minus 11 dBm. What this means is that there might be something additional wrong with this reference cable, and it shouldn't be used uh, for testing. But in this case, it's fine. So we're going to check the, um, the 1550 nanometer cable now. So we plug in the other side of this duplex cable. And again, it says low because we haven't switched the wavelength over yet. So on both units, we need to switch to 1550. So we press uh, lambda on the laser owl. We press lambda twice on the, wa on the wave tester. You'll notice again, minus 10.2. This is you know, not below minus 11 dBm. So the 1550 reference cable is also fine. Now to check this third cable, uh, the best way to do this is to set a temporary reference for, uh, for this 1550 nanometer wavelength. 
To do that, we simply press and hold the zero button. Okay, notice it goes to zero, around zero dB. Okay, notice it also switched to dB mode. Okay, dB is what you use for loss measurements, and this is what we're, we're trying to do here. Okay, so now what we do is we connect in the mating sleeve and the third cable in between uh, this reference cable and the detector. Once we plug in, oh, one second. That's, not, that's not quite right. Okay, sometimes it, you need to reseat the connections. Uh, now, in this case, we have a reading of a, around you know, 0 0.46, 0 0.47. Um, really, what we're looking for is uh, a reading that's a you know minus or a half a dB or less. Uh, now there's there's going to be a little bit of loss in the connection here in the mating sleeve and a little bit in the in the in this third patch cable. Really, we're just trying to make sure that uh, we don't exceed 0.5. Again, if you do, then there might be something additional wrong either with the mating sleeve or this cable, and they should be replaced. But since we've checked all these patch cables and determined that they are fine, we can now continue on with our measurements. If the power level falls below the acceptable power level range, debris such as dust, dirt, or finger oil may have collected on the connector end face or in the equipment's optical ports. Thoroughly clean and inspect all connector end faces and equipment's optical ports according to industry standard cleaning procedures. Several cleaning cycles may be required. Keeping connectors and optical ports clean at all times helps to keep test equipment in good working order and proper calibration ensuring accurate and reliable test results. When not in use, dust caps should be kept on fiber connectors and optical ports to keep debris from collecting on the surfaces of the connectors and ports. During testing, it is highly recommended to clean and inspect both connectors and optical ports every time a connection is made. Failure to properly maintain your test equipment could needlessly result in costly repairs. For example, over time, repeated connector insertions into a dirty optical port could grind the debris into the optics in an equipment port. This type of damage is permanent and cannot be repaired in the field. If the problem still exists after thorough cleaning and inspection, the patch cable may need to be replaced. Patch cables are typically rated for a few hundred connector insertions, but can prematurely wear out or become damaged if they are not properly handled and maintained. If the power level is still too low, even after patch cable replacement, contact OWL technical support for assistance. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.